So, hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be presenting my study, which is uh, called Adolescent Obesity, Well-Being, and Mental Health in Santiago. Uh, this study is going to take, oh, uh, this study is going to take place at INTA, uh, which is the Instituto de Nutrición y Tecnología de los Alimentos. Um, Basically, just to give you some background about the institution itself, um, this institution is run by Dr. Rowley, um, who, uh, who, um, and uh, basically, um, the research at INTA used to focus on the prevention of, of pediatric malnutrition, and now it, uh, their interdisciplinary focus focuses, mostly focuses on obesity and the prevention of chronic diseases. Um, in addition to the research, there's also a clinical component, and they look at sort of the diagnosis of metabolic and genetic diseases, and there's also an educational component, which basically means they offer graduate courses and advanced degrees in nutrition. Um, in, ter oh, uh, in terms of uh, the GOCS study itself, I'm sorry, it's missing an apostrophe. Um, but the GOCS is, um, is short for the Growth and Obesity Cohort Study. Um, and, it's a, and this is a large longitudinal study of 1,195 low middle income children who have been recruited from 6 Hanging in Baldinas in the uh, metropolitan region of Santiago. Um, basically, the study was broken down, uh, and has been broken down into three phases. The first stage um, was basically when these kids were in preschool. And that's when they first uh, sort of recruited kids for the study. At that time, they collected uh, anthropomorphic measures as well as birth anthropomorphy. Um, in stage two, the children were seven to ten years old, so they came back in for study visits once every six months. Um, and at that time, they collected anthropomorphic measures again, as well as measures of physical activity, diet, and prepubertal maturation. Um, and then in stage three, uh, which is the current stage of this study, um, they've been collecting measures on anthropomorphic morphe, uh, diet, environmental food exposures, epigenetic markers, and pre-pubertal maturation and progression. Um, and basically these kids are now 13 to 14 years old. Um, so essentially, like, and so now that you have some context, the goal of my specific study is to add validated measures of um, quality of life uh, and well-being to the surveys that they've already established um, as part of the study. Um, and the research questions then are sort of twofold. Um, one of the questions is, um, one of the questions, sorry, uh, one of the questions is um, sort of what impact does overweight and obesity have on health, on quality of life in these, in these cohort of adolescents? And the second one is how we can maximize uh, the response to survey questions for adolescents enrolled in the GOCS study. Um, so then, in terms of the literature, there is sort of um, a lot. Um, just as a side note, I realized that my uh, that the title for my original project was Adolescent Obesity, Well-Being, and Mental Health in Santiago. Um, but then after doing the, re the lit review, I sort of realized that actually quality of life and well-being prior to what I thought are not the same thing. And since well-being measurements are still newer and are still being developed, I thought it would be more appropriate to look at quality of life measurements instead. Um, so the literature on obesity essentially has uh, said that, like basically previous studies have found that there is an association between obesity and lower quality of life scores in adolescents. Um, and furthermore, um, they found that this burden of uh, like on quality of life is comparable to the um, is comparable to the uh, burden of other chronic diseases. Um, and then in addition to that, um, the subscales that are most affected on quality of life, the subscales on quality of life measures that are most affected by obesity <coughs> are generally emotional functioning, self-esteem, as well as physical functioning. Um, and then the last thing is the uh, importance of self-perception. Um, and previous study has essentially found that self-perception and like perception of like your own body weight and your own body mass may be just as important as actual Ill, as actual BMI um, on people's quality of life and happiness. Um, and so that's sort of the summary of the uh, association between quality of life and obesity. Looking at the association between quality of life and puberty um, is basically a lot less clear uh, what that association is. However, um, previous studies have found or have found some evidence that um, girls with early onset of puberty have, uh, over the long term, have a 
also it's been associated with, with worse educational outcomes, earlier sexual behavior, and more binge eating and dieting behavior. Um, however, one very, very long-term longitudinal study by Johannes and Ritz in 2005 like basically took a sample of girls and followed them for long periods of time. They found no association between on early onset of puberty and quality of life measures itself. So like it's unclear what sort of um, findings exactly we'll, we'll have with that. Um, so basically this next slide is just a table by Bernie um, and all condemned, which was a study conducted in 2007, and it sort of compares the uh, quality of life scores in their sample of obese children compared with those of healthy children and then other chronic diseases, um, just to sort of give you a sense of the numbers. Um, so then after looking at the research, um, we essentially hypothesized that um, consistent with previous findings, we expect that um, adolescents who are overweight and obese will have lower quality of life scores in our sample of adolescents. Um, and we also expect, um, however, we also expect that this uh, association between overweight and obesity and quality of life may change over time as the kids get older. Um, and then in terms of puberty, um, timing of puberty, that we like, it may also have an effect on quality of life. Um, and specifically, girls who have early onset of puberty may have qual or lower quality of life scores, although again, uh, there's less prior evidence for that. Um, and then the other, the last part of my, um, did I? No, okay. Uh, and then the last sort of part of the component of my survey is sort of like really looking at the recruitment um, for our study. Uh, and essentially, like in terms of getting these kids engaged in the research and getting them involved, we think that they'll be more likely to respond to surveys if we provide them with extra incentives, such as a lottery. Um, rather than giving them nothing, um, and you know, it'll it'll be uh, interesting to see if the res if the survey response is varied to whether based on whether um, these children answer our surveys in clinic online or over the phone. Um, in terms of research objectives, um, essentially the primary objective is to add these quality of life scales to this big longitudinal study, as I already said. And then the specific uh, objectives are first to make sure that the quality of life scales that we're using are age and holistically and culturally appropriate. Um, and the goal, one of the goals would be to pilot the survey tools. Um, and then the next thing we'll do is we'll try to collect uh, quality of life uh, information on the adolescents in the GOCS study. And then to evaluate the association between quality of life and overweight and obesity. And then the last goal is to evaluate the quality, the association between the quality of life and early onset of puberty. Um, basically, the uh, potential, oops, didn't change that. Um, the potential impact of the study, um, first of all, is academic, you know, uh, by adding, you know, this will basically see what the relation, this will basically clarify the association between obesity and quality of life in a community sample of adolescents. Um, and it'll also, this research will also establish um, baseline measurements for future research and quality of life uh, research. Um, and then um, in terms of policy, GOCS has um, researchers collaborate with the National School Board Program. Thus, there's a possibility that these results can influence direct policies regarding adolescent nutrition and mental health. Um, and then as far as the GOCS study, um, basically as these kids get older, like it's really important for the researchers who are in GOCS to find ways to communicate more directly with the kids rather than with the parents, which is what they had previously been <coughs> doing. So hopefully um, this study will also potentially enhance the ways in which researchers can contact uh, adolescents who are in the GOCS and ADECO studies um, and sort of help recruit them for other sub-studies. Um, I don't know what happened there. Why? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was pressing the wrong button. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so in terms of study design and methodology, um, this is a cross-sectional and observational study. Um, basically, the study has two parts. In December, January, and March, really the goal is to uh, obtain validated measures of quality of life and mental health and then translate the survey tools into Spanish using best practices, which essentially means translating the tools from English to Spanish or adopting them to Chilean Spanish if they've already been translated to Spanish, 
and then back translating to English. Um, and then comparing the two English versions side by side, seeing if there's any difference. Um, and then the last step is to pilot the survey on 15 adolescents and test for reading and, to, and test for comprehension and test for test reliability. And then um, in April through August, the goal will be to focus on survey implementation. So that means um, asking survey questions to adolescents in person, online, and over the phone, basically getting as many survey responses as we can, and then analyzing the data to test, again, the association between obesity, onset of puberty, and quality of life using both univariate and specific analyses. Um, oops, I did the same thing again. Uh, there we go. Um, so this is just a sort of a timeline of the study. Um, right now, and we're in March, so there's a lot to do. Um, the lit review has been done. Um, we're pretty much in the process of figuring, and so now we're pretty much in the process of figuring out which measures to use. And so these are sort of the measures that I've been looking at using. Um, in the lit review, I found 13 different measures of quality of life that people had used. Of those, um, we're still considering five of them. Two of these measures are generic, which means that they can be used for any sort of population. They're not disease specific at all. Two measures are generic with disease specific, obesity specific modules, and then two, and then one measure is just obesity specific. Um, and then this is sort of looking at still at those five um, quality of life measures that we're considering. This is sort of the names of the different ones, um, the number of items that they use, and the number of dimensions. And um, yeah, and then the collaborators for the study um, are um, Camila Corlevan, Dina Rosario J, Karen Michaels, Mariela Preto Martinez, uh, uh, Alvaro Verges, and Nancy Gosera Centero. Um, most of my connections are either at the University of Chile or the University of Catolica. And, and you know, just to reiterate again, INTA is part of the University of Chile. So, um, and then it's sponsored by the US Fulbright Program. Um, and Camila is in the back corner there, um, and, and she's one of the advisors for the project as well. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, does anyone have any questions?